Today we have a Solina, better known as the String Ensemble, ARP uh, Market Vs, and showing you the back a little bit here. We get on to the front. As far as for the jacks, we have an out, expression pedal jack, out two, a trigger out, and a gate out. The trigger and gate on the back make the keyboard useful for other things. And um, we have a power, power light, nice tag. This is a tuning knob for all of it, simple little pot. We have a contrabass and cello for a bass section. And the bass section, I believe, only works up to about this note here. So you have a little octave of bass here, a little bit more an octave. You have a bass volume, so you can control it separately. You have a crescendo, and you have a sustain length. And that's more like attack decay, and that would be your attack, and that would be the decay of the notes. You have an overall volume, and you have some push button sounds. Uh, you have a violola, a violin, a trumpet, and a horn. I believe this to be a later model because it has a horn section. The other, what I believe to be an earlier model, has the modulation button in, pla in place of the horn section. And that would be right here. And this modulation button is on the side here. And that is the chorus and pretty much what the sound is famous for. And uh, turn it on and let you hear some of the sounds. Okay, I'll start out with the bass sounds here. And again, you have the contra bass and the cello sound. I'll push the contra bass first. So the note, the bass section goes up to here. And as you can tell, the bass automatically has a sustain section on it. And sort of attack too. It's not a real sharp attack, and it has a bit of a release to it. Also, as you note, it is only a single note, and it has a low note priority. As you can see here, nothing happens when you push these. Okay, we'll go into the cello section. It's a little bit brighter. And you can also mix both the knobs together. And of course you have a volume part too, you can turn it off if you don't want it. Okay, next we have, I'll skip the attack and decay for a second here. This is the volume overall for the whole thing. The first sound you have is a viola. We'll run through the keys here. And the violin. The trumpet. I kind of like the trumpet. It sounds like a, a combo organ. And then we have the last one here, which is the horn. Horn section sounds good too. You can uh, mix these also, so we'll turn them all on for a second. And we can turn on both the basses. Again, you control the bass volume too. So you control how much it feeds through. I 
Okay, and then you have a crescendo. We'll go ahead and turn it all the way up for a second. See, it takes a while to bleed up and ramp up, and we have a sustain length too, so. And do that one more time. So it's got a really nice long sustain too. I'm going to mix these a little bit here. Real nice sound. Okay, on to what the thing is really famous for. The modulation section. Okay, I'll turn it on now. just turning the tuning knob. It has a wide range of tuning on it. sounds for the limited buttons or choices you have here for the tone filtering the of course the famous sound is with the modulation on and probably these turned up a good amount gives a real nice spooky sound <laughs> okay thanks for listening okay i thought i'd tack this on uh, because the 70s really doesn't sound like the 70s without a phase shift. Uh, a lot of people use these, so I put out a small stone. It's uh, one of my favorite phasers on the market that you can still buy. And here we go. I'll turn the rate down to low and the color on four ways. <laughs>
as you can tell, something really simple like that uh, affects the sound a lot and makes it sound very much more authentic than without it. So, I hope you enjoyed the add-on.